So oftentimes, when you're dealing with inverse trig functions, one of the first fun things that happens is doing a composition of trig and inverse trig functions. So let's see how we can go about evaluating these. So the first one I have written down is the sine of the inverse cosine of 1 fourth. So some things that we can get from this, right, we're taking the inverse cosine of this ratio. 1 fourth is the ratio corresponding to the cosine of a given angle. So this is crucial. The inverse cosine of a ratio, this whole thing, is an angle. So what I like to do is go ahead and give it an angle name. And then I always do a picture. And you should always do a picture as well. So I'm going to draw a right triangle. And I'm going to go find theta. And then, so here's what I have. I have the inverse cosine of 1 fourth equals theta. I made that up. That's what it is now. So now if I apply cosine to both sides of this equation, I have the cosine of the inverse cosine of 1 fourth equals the cosine of theta. With me? Well, what happens if we do a composition of a function and its inverse? Well, as long as your domain restrictions are met, what happens is, right, these two are matter and antimatter. They annihilate, and all you get out is the argument. So when I come label the sides of my triangle, I need to label them so that the cosine of theta is 1 over 4. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so 1 over 4. And then Pythagorean theorem will give you that missing side. Looks like that's square root of 15. Now I have all the sides of my triangle labeled. And come back and look at what we're trying to find, the sine of theta. Well, the sine of theta, according to my triangle, is root 15, right, opposite over hypotenuse. And that's how we do composition of inverse and regular trig functions. Okay, so let's try two more. So secant of the arctangent of 2. So arctangent, remember, this is just a different way to write inverse tangent. So again, this is an inverse trig function, which gives an angle. So I have inverse tangent of 2 equals theta. Grab my black marker here. So if I do the tangent of both sides, tan, tan, what happens on the left is the tangent and inverse tangent cancel, and we get 2. And on the right is the instructions on how to draw my triangle. So the tangent of theta, so draw your triangle, find theta, and then label the side so that the tangent of theta is 2. And you can make that 2 over 1 if it makes it easier to label your sides. Here's my right angle. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. Pythagorean theorem gives you the missing side in case we need it. So now I'm ready to go back and answer the question. I have the secant of theta, right? arctangent of 2, also known as theta. So the secant of theta, secant is 1 over cosine, right? So that would be instead of um, adjacent over hypotenuse, it's going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. 
So my answer, I'll go ahead and stick it up here because I've got some room, hypotenuse root 5 over adjacent 1. Okay, how does this change? Getting into the uh, kind of calculus part of it. So if you're taking this trig class as a pre-calc class, um, we do this. This gets um, visited in both Calc 1 and Calc 2. So let's see how this is going to work. Have you already started? So theta, how about this? I'm going to sneak in sine of theta equals 1 over x. Draw that triangle. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side. And then I need the tangent of theta. opposite over adjacent. Final answer.